Mm, okay, folks, bodies, bodies, bodies. It's your buddy Mike Messier with my Mike's Instant Movie Review for this horror film. I'm just enjoying my new water bottle I got in this mall discount store. I guess this was $3, so now, I'm not guessing, I know it was $3. And then they have these bottles of water, too, for a dollar. Let's get back to the movie. Uh, kind of like I've been saying a lot for these horror films, if you're a horror fan, Bodies, Bodies, Bodies is as good as good a thing to see as any. Kind of a throwback to, like, the pretty girls, you know, having the sleepover, getting killed, and then it's, you know, who's, who's killing who. Uh, Pete Davidson and some other guy who... They claim his character is in his is about forty years old, and I don't know how old Pete Davidson's character was supposed to be, but I mean he looks like he's thirty five or so, and they're hanging out with these young women that look like they're, you know, still in college twenty twenty one twenty two, but I mean maybe they're a little older the characters, but definitely a dichotomy there. And and why I bring that up is because they keep saying that Pete Davidson and one of these young women are. You know, they're best friends forever. But uh, it's kind of like, how did that work? Was she eight and he was 18 or 23? It, because it, Davidson, no offense, is dramatically older than these uh, female actresses, the characters. So the storyline of them just being friends, uh, to me, was standing on a weak edge. I mean, it is for certain that certain men of an age like to hang out with young attractive women and you can't blame them for that but uh there's a creepiness level in that dynamic that i don't think is ever addressed in the film maybe just the, the they just presenting it to you and make up your own mind uh but um in any event uh spoilers uh they start playing they're at a pete davidson's character is rich apparently or his family's rich and he, he's in this beautiful house and they, they're they having this party and then they invite all these people and uh, the one one girl comes and she brings her lesbian partner, which uh, I just mentioned that because, you know, it's interesting that it's just a very casual thing that's not harped on, but there's some uh, lesbianic action in this film with these young women. They're exploring themselves and their bodies and so forth. Uh, and... Uh, so on and so on um and then you know the the things start happening there's a bit of a a game that they play bodies 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 it's like a mystery whodunit type of thing but of course as could be seen a mile away the game starts but then the death becomes real it's no game and suddenly uh the first uh, spoilers the first corpse in the screen is pete davidson's character and uh so they, the young women are all shocked and amazed. They think it might be the older guy because Davidson's character was being a prick to him before. And we're off to the races. And it becomes one of those, it's a stormy night, of course. The electricity goes out. Nobody has service on their phones, etc. And it's like a mystery of who killed who and how can we prove it. And yada, yada, shush, boom, ba, fuck. Is this a movie that's a class? I mean, first of all, if you could go to this movie, if if you typically don't like horror, like if you don't like the gore or like the real shit that's going to fuck you up, this one's pretty light by comparison. I mean, it kind of feels like a, I, I, I mean, just to say it, like even like a late 70s slumber party massacre or just an updated version of that type of thing. So if you have issues with like really graphic horror, like the saw or whatever the fuck else, uh, even the black phone, which is more of like a psychological damaging film, uh, you should be okay with this. I mean, this is not something that's going to keep you up at night. I mean, it's not that believable and it's not that horrific. I mean, there's some blood and guts and definitely, uh, an attractive cast. I'll give them that much. Um, but the characters are not really sympathetic. You really don't like these characters. You, you know, it's kind of one of those films where you're cheering for them to die, to be quite honest with you, because they're all annoying as hell. And uh, 
you know, Davidson himself is pretty fucking annoying, at least, but I think he plays into that, and I think he plays into that well. He is funny at times, but I think he plays into the being obnoxious and unlikable. So, what do I think? I mean, I'm glad I saw the movie. Uh, the soundtrack was pretty good. The end credit song was good. Uh, like I said, there's some attractive women in this thing. Uh, and some creepy older dudes. And it's more or less a one-location movie. Like, just the big house. I guess there's a few scenes before that. In a field. Uh, so, I don't know. I mean, it's, it's not a movie that I would say is going to be anybody's top 10 fucking horror film and it's not a movie that you can say suck balls or it's the worst movie of the summer or any of that shit it's just in the vast gray area of it's a fucking movie it's escapism entertainment uh it's worth watching but it's not worth remembering i probably wouldn't go see it again anytime soon but if i did happen to see it again it wouldn't kill me either you see what I'm saying? In some ways, it's a very uh, flaccid movie. It's unoffensive because it doesn't really stimulate you one way or the other. You're not excited about it, and you're not disgusted by it. So it's just kind of a neutral thing. There was a funny moment in this mall. After the movie, I went to the mall like it was 1988, and I'm walking around, and they very retro they have the fucking kiosks and they have i don't know i'm trying to think of a nice name to call these folks kiosk jockeys is that okay i mean i don't want to be offensive but the kiosk jockey uh i'm walking by and they always have some bullshit to sell i mean it's just like the worst 1995 crap that they're trying to sell you some fucking shirt or some bullshit uh, eye cream or something. I mean, it's it's like, wow, this is really retro. But, it, hey, they're working for a living. They're not standing outside with a goddamn cardboard sign. So I give them credit. So I try to be polite. But at the same time, I don't really want to get roped into these conversations. I did once here with a young uh, foreign attractive woman. She was trying to sell me some fucking cream or whatnot. Um, and, you know, it's always the same thing. Oh, this is normally $1,000 if you buy it online, but I can give it to you for 40 bucks. Okay, thanks, sister. Uh, but with this guy, just a young guy, you know, I'm not going to give him a hard time, but I'm walking through the mall, just trying to get my steps in, trying to get some walking in. And the guy, like, comes up to me and says, hey, he's, like, trying to give me a fist pound. But it's, it's so clear that there's no reason to give me a fist pound other than you're trying to rope me into some bullshit conversation and sell me some bullshit product, which I do not need and I do not want. So he's, he's raising up for the fist pound, and I give him back a thumbs up. <laughs> now, just at that moment, uh, a woman, I'm assuming a friend of his, was walking towards this madness, walking towards him, Ooh, my arm looks horrible. Jesus. What the fuck? It looks like Ric Flair's arm. I don't like that. I guess I'll have to start going to the goddamn gym again. My arm just looked very flat. Ugh. Jesus H. Fuck. Well, you know what I'm doing tomorrow? Arm day. That did not look good. Maybe it was just the shadow. It didn't look good. I didn't like that. Christ. It looked very, like, ugh. For Christ's sake. It's unflattering fucking... It's unflattering. So the motherfucker is trying to give me the fist pound. And I give him the thumbs up. And then this chick walks up. And she's, I hear him. She says this to him. He gave you the thumbs up. And I'm like, yeah, I fucking did. <laughs> so I got one over on the fuck. And uh, I thought it was funny. It was humorous to me. That I kind of, uh, you know, chumped him in front of his chick. So there you go, folks. Uh, a day at the mall. It's muggy. It's a Thursday. Thursday's always one of those fucking days. Like, you can justify it as a weekday or a weekend day. It depends on your mood. It depends on your station in life. But for me, this was kind of an in-between day. It's one of those days where I got some things accomplished despite myself. Like, I wasn't the most productive up and at them, take on the fucking world. But everywhere I turned, I was doing things uh, productively. So I'm proud of myself for that, that just the alignment of my life was in order today, which I'm, I'm kind of excited about. I mean, that, not enough to sing a fucking song. 
Uh, NFL starts today. I'm predicting the NFL Rams, uh, the fucking Super Bowl champion Rams, to win the goddamn game over the Bills. The Bills are just not a team that does much for me or does much for anyone. So in fruition or in whatever the fuck, I'm saying, yes, it's a decent movie. Bodies, bodies, bodies. Not the greatest movie of all time. Not the worst movie of all time. If you like horror, if you like pretty girls getting killed and so forth, go see it. If you can tolerate Pete Davidson, he's not in the whole movie. Uh, he does die. His character dies. Not him. I know the difference uh, because I'm an actor myself. Watch my goddamn acting reel. It's fine. It's all good. Goodbye. Subscribe to Mike Nessie YouTube channel.